so let's start uh, today uh, good morning everyone uh, in our last class so we have just started to discuss uh, this slide uh, on digital signal processing so what is it we had discussed previously that in a digital signal processing we need to have the analog signal okay now this analog signal is to be processed using the digital processing unit okay now analog it is a basically a continuous time signal whereas the digital processing unit they deal with the digital signals which are basically discrete time signals now to convert this continuous time signal to the discrete time signals we had discussed in our last class that we need an analog to digital converter okay so what it does analog to digital converters it converts the analog signal into discrete time signals <coughs> okay i am not going into the mechanics of the uh, how uh, continuous time signals are being converted into the digit, uh, discrete time signals okay so the main funda is analog signal is first converted into digital signal and then that digital signal it is being put into the digital processing unit for processing okay now in our last class we had just started to talk about a condition where whether we can directly use the analog signal and convert it into the digital processing uh, digital signals or the discrete time signals using analog to digital converter can we do that the answer over here is no okay the answer over here is no so what we need to do if you see in this flow graph i have used a term anti aliasing filter okay now what is this anti aliasing filter when we convert an continuous time signal or the analog signals into continuous time analog signals into the discrete time signals so what happens we basically do sampling okay sampling of what sampling of the amplitude values of any signals so say, say amplitude of the signals with respect to a particular time index say this is zero time index 1 2 3 and so on it goes on till whatever uh, duration you want to process the signal okay now when we do this we get two types of frequency okay one the first one is the frequency of the signal itself okay and second is if you see at the zero time index i have taken one signal at one time index i have taken another signal at uh, second time index i have taken another uh, point from the signal okay so what is this this is basically a time period 0 to 1 it's a time period then 1 to 
it is again a time period and then 2 to 3 it is again we are getting another time period so what is this this is again will result to another frequency which is called the sampling frequency now if you see over here when we are converting an analog uh, continuous time analog signal into discrete time signal or further in, uh, if we converted the discrete time signal into the digital time signals these signals are associated with two types of frequencies first the frequency of the signal itself and the second is the sampling frequency now many of you who have studied digital signal processing in your undergraduate classes you know the process of sampling it is governed with a theorem or a uh, property which is regarded as nyquist property nyquist is shannon it is basically what it says uh, we can also have this nyquist rate or frequency so what does this uh, property says what does this property says yes sir greater this than says, pardon sampling frequency greater than equal twice the maximum frequency yeah so it Sorry. says sampling frequency it is greater than equal to f of m twice yeah okay uh, twice of oh, sorry twice of f of m twice of f m now the thing is over here when we go to the fourier series or even fourier transform what does it say both the fourier series and the fourier transforms gives us uh, tells us that any signal any continuous time analog signal or the continuous time signals or the analog signal they are constituted with infinite numbers of sinusoids okay now when we are having infinite number of sinusoids these signals sinusoidal signals they are basically constituted of the signals that have mm, that have frequencies which ranges from minus infinity to plus infinity also they have amplitudes which may vary from minus infinity to plus infinity okay now if you say if you see we are saying that the analog signals if you draw the analogy between from here and here this fourier series and fourier transform we can see that the frequency may vary from minus infinity to infinity so any analog signal it is having frequencies from minus infinity to plus infinity okay but when we are trying to sample the analog signal and convert it into the digital signal we have this limiting criteria 
right? We have this limiting criteria which is governed by the Nyquist rate or Nyquist frequency phenomenon, right? Now, these two are contradicting now, right? These two phenomena, they are contradicting. On one hand, you are saying you are having frequencies from minus infinity to plus infinity. And on the other hand, you are saying that before sampling, uh, we should have a finite maximum frequency. Okay. So to circumvent this problem, what is done? is that we apply anti aliasing filter okay we apply anti aliasing filter so what it does it band limits the frequency range of the given signal okay so what does band limiting means band limiting means you are constraining the frequency range of the signal okay so what we do over here we apply low pass filter okay why low pass filter if you see most of the signals they are having frequencies which are near to zero okay which are near to zero and then it uh, varies to say 30 hertz or 120 hertz or even 5 kilohertz in ENG signals. Okay, But the fact is it becomes from near to zero. Okay, So we usually apply the low pass filter but when we talk about band limiting you can say that we are limiting a band, so we may use band pass filter. Okay. It is correct, but if we use a band pass filter, how does the uh, frequency response of a band pass filter looks like? So this is the FL and this is FH. Okay. So what you are doing, you are rejecting some component of the signals below FH and you are rejecting some components above FH. Here FH corresponds to FM, okay, maximum frequency. When we talk about the analysis of the signals, it is prerogative to understand that there might be some information which may be hidden in the DC frequency also. Leave alone the frequency ranges which are near to zero. Say for in uh, uh, ECG, we have frequency components starting from 0 0.1 hertz. Okay. This is very near to zero. But even if you want to design a filter, you can design a filter. Uh, which can give you information about the 0 0.1 hertz, but it may so happen that if you apply a band pass filter, the information which is subsided within the DC frequency that will be lost. Okay, and we do not want to happen that. Okay, so instead of band pass filter, the low pass filter is uh, low pass filters are usually used okay this is also true in the case of if you want to acquire some signals from the sensors for other instrumentation purpose if you remove the dc frequency then what might happen is that you may lose some information about the dc component which are being generated by the sensor okay or very low frequency components 
which are being used uh, for the analysis okay so you will be losing some information due to this reason you will find that all the textbooks they say that anti aliasing filter uses a low pass filter and you will not find even though the name says that band limiting you will not find that a band pass filter is used okay <clears throat> now the thing is then if you are using low pass filter why we are naming this filter as anti aliasing filter this is an important point so why this thing for this let us take a sinusoidal signal like this and it is in the time domain so this is t and this is a now if you suppose so this is the one cycle so as per the nyquist criteria we say that our sampling frequency should be at least twice the maximum frequency so that means in this one cycle we should have at least two samples okay say for example if we have one sample then what will happen suppose the sample is over here first sample is here then the second sample it will be here then the third sample it will be here now if you try to join this line interpolate this thing so what you are getting you are getting a dc signal but our original signal it is a sinusoid okay in some cases this uh, uh, sampling point maybe say it is here first sampling point is here the second is here the third will be here again over here you can see there is a dc component okay now if we take at least two samples per cycle okay what happens say the first point is here the second point is here the third point is here the fourth point is here so we are getting something like a triangular signal but at least from here we can predict that there might be a sinusoid okay though it is not giving you this fs equal to 2 of fm it is not giving you the exact sinusoid however it is giving you an indication that the signal is uh, the signal might be a sinusoid okay so if you see when we are going below this critical limit what is happening we are getting a totally distorted signal <clears throat> which we may call it as alias in movies you might have seen that uh, many criminals or uh, some secret service uh, agents they are holding 
but they are holding different passports okay now when they are holding uh, different passports uh, uh, passports you must have heard during talking about that fellow they use the word alias so alias means disguising okay so over here what we are having if our we are not restricting our um, um we are not restricting the frequency of the signal to fm then adc what it will do it will not be able to follow the nyquist criteria the reason being what will happen the fourier series and fourier transform it says that there are infinite number of frequencies so the adc will not be able to handle the signal and due to this reason we will be getting a condition similar to what we are getting at a dc component over here so we are having a in this example we are having a sinusoid signal however when we are sampling it below the critical level we are getting a signal which is totally devoid of the original uh, nature of the original signals so there is no match between the two uh, components even though the samples are taken from the original signal itself however when we are limiting the frequency to fm we are giving the opportunity to the adc to follow the nyquist rate criteria of of fm okay so hence the filter what we use under this condition they are regarded as anti aliasing filter okay <clears throat> now we know that to make in, uh, make an analog signal compatible for the digital processing unit what we have to do we have to take the analog signal we have to first band limit the signal using the anti aliasing filter now once we have done that we go to the adc analog to digital converter it will convert the analog uh, signals which are continuous time signals to discrete time signals okay and then it will do the quantization and after the quantization it will pass on the signal to the digital processing unit okay however in many a cases you might be needing the output as the analog signal so these three steps these are optional okay so instead of uh, having this uh, uh, this these steps from the digital processing unit you may have a digital display and you can display the signals over there okay <clears throat> so let's not talk about this at this moment let's take the longer path and see uh, and uh, say what happens when we need the analog signal as the output <clears throat> so after the digital signals are processed the process signals are again converted into digital to an uh, analog converter so this uh, what happens the digital signals they have been converted to the analog signals using the digital to analog converter okay now the thing is that when it is converted suppose in digital signals we are having discrete time signals like this like this 
like this like this okay so what happens when it is converted to analog signals it forms a step wise signal like this okay now we are talking about t okay t is in the continuous time domain and this is the amplitude but if you see we have started with a smooth signal pattern and we intend to take uh, we intend to take uh, uh, intend to have this signal into this form into a smooth signal pattern okay but over here we are getting staircase like signal okay even though it is an analog signal we will be seeing the staircase stops okay now how to do uh, how to avoid this thing any idea so by using resolution no that is uh, again uh, that will be there so anyone else no okay so have you heard the word envelope what is an envelope you must be sending some letters to your uh, uh, friends so you use the envelope what is an envelope to hold the information but... no it's not the hold the information it's about covering the information okay the information is your letter and you put it within the envelope that means your letter is being protected with an outer covering okay with an outer covering which is called envelope now over here what is the envelope so these are the uh, these were the points so you will be getting an envelope like this which will basically take a polygon okay to connect your points okay and what is the simplest thing the simplest thing is to use a reconstruction filter which is also an low pass filter okay which is also an low pass filter but it will have some magnification 1 by x c or something like that okay it will have some magnification so in this what will happen it will basically what is an low pass filter basically it is an averager and what does averager does averages it calculates the average okay and in the process of doing the averaging they generate a polygon like shape just like the envelope okay so what this filter does it filter uh, this filter changes this staircase like analog signal to a smoothened signal and what is smoothing smoothing is nothing thing but averaging okay so this reconstruction filter which is also an lpf filter it what it does it changes the step size analog signals into a smoothened 
सिग्नल और द इनवेलप ऑफ द सैंपल सिग्नल ऑफ द डिजिटल सिग्नल ओके विच गिवस अस द कंटिन्यूस टाइम एनालॉग सिग्नल्स विच आर हैविंग ए स्मूथ टेक्सचर ओके सो दिस इज द कंप्लीट प्रोसेस how we deal with digital signal processing okay now in many books you will find that after the analog signal we are having analog to digital converter this is because usually the anti aliasing filter it is often considered as a part of the of the adc analog to digital converter similarly when we are talking about this digital to analog converter the reconstruction filter over here it is also considered as a part of the digital to analog converter so in many books you will find that uh, you are having analog signal then you are having analog to digital converter then you are having digital processing unit then you are having digital to analog converter and then you are have the having the analog output again but i prefer to use uh, this longer pathway because it helps us in making the uh, listener in making the understanding how the analog to digital converter works and what is the role of the anti aliasing filter and the reconstruction filters okay so it gives you a deeper understanding so i personally prefer this uh, uh, longer uh, flow chart okay so if you get it in an exam you have to write this one only okay now let go to the next one what are the advantages of dsp guaranteed accuracy okay when we are talking about the digital circuits i have told that digital circuits if you want to have a gain of 2 you can directly write the algorithm of to multiply your original signal so your v0 if you write that you want v0 where it should be 2 multiplied by v in you can directly get it over here so it will be accurate however if you use the analog signal processing tools then this 2 may be either 1.99 or it may also be 0.2.01 uh, okay so there will be a deviation over there however once you have taken the signal into the digital processing as uh, digital signal uh, processing unit you can expect the guaranteed accuracy then same next is flexibility how flexible flexibility it should be like this that suppose today you are operating with one sensor which needs a gain of 2 okay but tomorrow you use a similar sensor however for that sensor you need a gain of 3 so what to do you just have to change a code and change 2 to 3 so and the rest of the process it may remain same so you can easily program the digital signal processors okay and it gives you a good flexibility in the analog domain what you had to do you had to change the whole circuit okay or a, even a part of the circuit you had to change the circuit to change the gain okay 
then superior performance it it will be very quick suppose if you are having a very large circuit if you are having a small circuit you will not uh, feel the difference okay however even uh, what will happen the uh, analog sy uh, systems or analog signal processing units they may be quite fast but however if you uh, see that if you want to have a very complex mathematics then what will happen you will be needing a lot of time in the analog signal processing circuits however in the digital signal processing since you are implementing it um, within the digital signal processors you can get it in a very quick fashion then drift so in analog signal processing what happens the resistance values the capacitance values they change with temperature and humidity and other environmental conditions so when you uh, when you are expecting that the um, the gain of the circuit should be 2 it may shoot up to 2.1 or 2.2 so this is called drift so automatically without changing the what do you call without changing the uh, circuits or making any physical changes within the circuit we are getting a different gain now this is drift so it is drifting from its original or expected values okay then adaptability in adaptability we have adaptive filters it is very difficult to implement adaptive filters in the analog domain but the same can be easily found out using the or implemented using the digital signal processors okay so one of the common example is the noise cancellation from speech signals which type of noise environmental noise okay so i am not telling that uh, the same cannot be done using the uh, analog signal processing yes it can be done but it is quite limited okay you cannot do complex things however using the digital signal processors we can implement better adaptive filters okay then perfect reproducibility as i told you every time if you want a gain of 2 every time you can get a uh, gain of 2 then multiplexing multiplexing means processing of multiple signals at the same time okay in analog signal processing we cannot do it because if you are having a same uh, same circuit the one circuit will be used by a by the one signal only however if we talk about digital signal processing we can process multiple signal by providing some time lags okay and it is called the multiplexing okay then data logging the data logging it is very difficult to do the data logging in the analog circuit but you can store the data quite easily using uh, within the digital circuits okay then 
we are having low frequency capability so if you want to process low frequencies then what happens is that <clears throat> in the analog domain we will be needing this capacitors and resistances values which is uh, having quite high values okay and it becomes difficult to implement those circuits however if we process the same signals in a digital signal processor what will happen is that <clears throat> we can process the signals very easily okay low the low frequency signals quite easily because there is no limitation over there we can just write a code and it will process the signal now these were the advantage of the dsps now what are the disadvantages increase system complexity while making a digital circuits the system becomes quite complex in nature second we have to optimize the speed and the cost if you want a very high speed digital signal processor the cost will go high quite high and if you want to make a low cost system the speed will be compromised not in only the speed but also the fine uh, finite word, uh, word length uh, effects will be getting quite uh, high okay so what is this so we all know that the digital signal processors they have been characterized by the word bits okay so what are these bits these bits are the levels okay so suppose you are having 8 bit then what will happen then you will be having eight levels of the signals so suppose you are having in actual world <clears throat> you are having 0 to 10 volt then this 0 to 10 volt it will be broken down into eight levels okay but think of a condition if you are having a 12 bit processor this 10 level 10 volts will be broken down into 12 levels okay so which one is better the 12 bit is better, um, the 12 bit uh, digital processor they are better than the 8 bits processor okay why because suppose if there is any value so suppose uh, say we uh, break it into 7 volts let us take uh, this as a 7 volt for the ease of uh, understanding so i have broken down 0 to 7 volt into 0 uh, into 8 levels so i am having 0 volt 1 volt 2 volt 3 volt 4 5 6 7 7 okay so suppose if there is any value say which is in between 0 and 1 say 0.49 now this will be rounded off to zero and if it is 0.5 it will be rounded off to one so what is happening when we are doing the this uh, quantization this process is called quantization where the amplitude values they take up pre defined values so during this quantization we are inducing some errors into the signal itself even if it is a 0.5 volt we are giving it 1 volt or even if it is 0.49 volt we are giving it it to 0 volt now when you try to increase the bits this levels they become more smaller so you can reduce the finite word length effect okay however the cost of the system will go quite high okay so depending upon the cost 
if you want a high cost system that high cost system will be having very high speed and the final word length effects will be lower that means the quantization errors during the rounding of process uh, it will be very low similarly if you take a low cost system the speed of the processor will be very low and also there will be a large finite word length effect okay now let us make a comparison over here between the analog signal processing and the digital signal processing speed if you see it is quite fast and digital signal processing it is usually moderate because it has to do a lot of uh, calculation however speed wise the analog signal processing uh, may be fast if you are implementing smaller circuits okay however if you go for a very complex circuit then as compared to the analog signal processing uh, system the digital uh, signal processing system may be bit faster okay <clears throat> then we have cost cost is low to moderate low is for very simple circuits and moderate for uh, if you want to make a very complex uh, system okay whereas digital signal processing to start with it is moderate in price okay then comes the flexibility it is low to moderate analog signal processing however digital signal processing systems they are quite flexible today you implement a particular algorithm tomorrow you can reprogram the uh, program uh, programming system and you can have another programming uh, program which will be implemented within the same processor okay performance analog signal processing system they are having a moderate performance because uh, you are not able to uh, have accurate uh, measurements okay or uh, accurate uh, processing unit however in digital signal processing you can have accurate processing then self calibrating analog signal processing uh, it will not have whereas digital signal processing it can have the self calibrating mode okay data logging capability analog signal processing it does not have <clears throat> however you can store some dc signals using capacitors but it will be very uh, tedious and very complex uh, system and it will be too costly however the data logging using the Uh, digital signal processing is very low cost and uh, you can store uh, tons of uh, data over there so nowadays this data logging capability of analog system is considered to be no because they are no longer being used okay then adaptive capability uh, adaptive capability analog signal processing systems they have very limited adaptive capability whereas digital signal processing systems they are having good adaptive capability i have taken an example biomedical example over here <clears throat> suppose there is a woman who is pregnant with a baby okay now this person she is having the ecg so say ecg m for mother and the fetus or the baby will be having its own ecg signals okay so if we try to get this signal the the ecg of the um, fetus so we have to pay the place electrodes around the tummy of the mother and when we do that we do not get ecg of the fetal if we get a signal and say ecg dash which is equals to ecg of fetus plus 
the ecg of the mother with lower amplitude so that's why i will give ecg dash okay <clears throat> now we are getting this complex equation this ecg signal if you want to extract the ecg of the fetus what you should do we should apply some adaptive methodologies so that we can remove this additional noise ecg <clears throat> signal from the mother so which will be considered here as a noise for us because ecg of the fetus is the main signal for us okay so this ecg component from the mother it will act as a noise so how do you find out how do you remove this noise is being removed using adaptive technology okay and what it uses it uses this ecg of the mother which are being taken from the chest area of the mother and so this will be the signal so ecgm so this adaptive uh, processor will be having ecgm and ecg dash and you will be getting some error e okay now this error will, will come out and it will change the weights of this dsp which will and uh, from here you will get another uh, signal which is uh, the ecgf and this error component it will be minimized so this will go and again change the you know, process until and unless this becomes minimum this error becomes minimum okay so this is how <clears throat> the adaptive capability of the digital signal processing is of utmost importance i have given just one example there are many other examples however this is one of the common example of uh, using adaptive digital signal processors for uh, the implementation of the uh, or for extracting the uh, what do you call the required information from the signals okay so we are out of time now so in the next uh, next class we will be talking about the applications of the dsp and that will be on friday okay